Hello and welcome to another Tiki Tuesday. I'm Brian Miller and tonight we are going to have a ton of fun creating an all new Tiki mug design. So that's always exciting. We only get to do that a few times a year, so always a good time. Uh, tonight we're going to be having a cocktail from the great Tiki Drink Book. And tonight's cocktail is the Blue Hawaiian. It's been a while since we've done that one, Blue Hawaiian. Uh, we can check that out. It's got uh, pineapple juice, blue curacao, golden rum, cream of coconut, and you can always throw a lime or a piece of pineapple or something in there if you've got it. But it's a it's a sweet but subtle cocktail. Not too alcohol forward, but you can always add an extra shot if you want. And uh, it has a great color, so that's one of my favorite parts about it. So of course, because of the color, we've got to make it in a, a clear shaker. Give this a shake and see how it looks tonight. I like mine a little on the frothy side. Shake it up real good. Oh yeah, there we go. And we're gonna serve that up in a vintage Shriners glass tonight. Aren't those guys cute with their fez hats on? Um, wanted to, again, just a, a clear glass so that we could see the the color of the cocktail tonight. So I thought it'd be a good way to do it. Let's check that out. Oh yeah, look at that. It looks great. The Blue Hawaiian. Oh man, can't go wrong with that. So cheers to all of you. Happy Tiki Tuesday. Hope you're having a great time. Grab a cold beverage and sit back and we're going to design a tiki mug. My stir stick is a little too long for this one. Mmm. Good to see there, Tomcat. Tomcat says very blue. Yeah, very blue this time and very tasty. It's fresh pineapple juice right now. Brand new um, cream of coconut. I might have put an extra shot of golden rum in there. Very nice. Mmm, 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 mmm. Oh man, that's good. So, so good. Well, I hope you've got a tasty cold beverage tonight. Let's crack open the sketchbook. And this is a sketch I did, gosh, I don't know, uh, months ago now. <laughs> Whitney says, reminds me of Baby Yoda cookies. <laughs> um, gosh, I don't know. It's been several months since I put this in the sketchbook. Um, but, you know, I did the Octo Tiki mug design and that one kind of got put on hold. And then I did the Tipsy Rum Barrel mug for um, uh, a tiki bar in Atlanta. And so this has been sitting in a sketchbook and tonight we're gonna get to it. So the idea with this one is that it's um, the Witch Doctor's Potion. Maybe the Witch Doctor's Brew, I don't know which one. But it's gonna be a little Witch Doctor standing on a little plinth and he's holding his cauldron overhead. So the cute thing is when you take a drink, it's like you're drinking out of the cauldron, but of course the entire vessel will be open inside. Uh, Whitney says, having some rogue dead guy whiskey and generic Coke Zero. Tomcat says, the color reminds me of the elephant looking player in Java's band. I don't remember his name. Size Noodles. Oh, was it Max Rebo, Whitney? Hmm, now I don't remember. It could be. I could be wrong. It happens from time to time, every day. Uh, so yeah, Max Rebo, Size Noodles. Now I don't remember. Uh, so as I did this mug design, I sketched out a couple of different ideas for the Witch Doctor's mask. And I kind of had this epiphany the other day. And, um, <laughs> okay, it's trying to block you, Whitney, because it says you're using profanity, but, um, I don't think you are, so there we go. <laughs> Tomcat says, looks like Whitney's right. Oh, good, glad to hear that. And uh, there you go. Woo see ya, uh, bing bang, walla walla, bing bang. Perfect. Yeah, it wanted to block it because you used the word bang. That's kind of funny. But I thought, why don't we use all three? Why don't we use all three of these? So let's take a look at the design. Here we go. So the idea here is that this mug will be mostly cylindrical, right? Whitney's like, oh my gosh, I laughed. 
And oh, the camera's freaking out. And um, see if we can get it to focus. Focus. Let's try this. I think the, the autofocus was a little blocked. Focus. <laughs> there we go. Um, as you rotate the mug around, you'll actually see all three masks. So it'll be like it's three witch doctors or three sides, um, but it'll still be cylindrical and we'll ha it'll have the, the cauldron at the top. So should be pretty cool. Uh, and that way we can do sort of like, you know, I wanted one that's sort of like almost got a, a mad crazy smile and one that's got like a little bit of a turned down face and then one that's like really super angry looking. So that way they're all unique. See which of these brush pins looks the best tonight. So we've got one whiskey and coke, and we've got any other beverages tonight? No. So I've got the blue Hawaiian. Wendy's having whiskey and coke. All right, let me know what you guys are drinking tonight. Hmm. The blue wine is especially good tonight. I think it's the fresh pineapple juice. But uh, I want to say thank you to everybody that's watching. I know we've got a couple of new people tonight. Um, I know that some of you won't jump on the chat because maybe you're um, uh, watching or listening at work or in your car. That's okay. We still like you. Appreciate you hanging out with us tonight. Um, but if you're new, feel free to hop on the chat. It is free to watch and free to chat. We're just here to have a good time. So definitely don't hesitate, get involved. Let us know what tiki cocktail you're drinking tonight. How your week is going so far. What kind of crazy shows you're streaming right now. Is it just me or is like Netflix just like going full tilt for 2021? There's like, we're just gonna just release like new stuff all the time until you succumb. Kind of seems like their their strategy right now. I think every time I, I flip it on, there's like you know two new movies and two new series. I'm like, what? Uh, Tomcat says just some lemonade for me tonight. I have an early start tomorrow. Well, that's okay. That's allowed. Some sometimes you got to make sacrifices. Like me, I didn't have a happy hour cocktail earlier. Well, I had one happy hour cocktail earlier. So that I could participate in Tiki Tuesday. See, it's all about sacrifice. Lots and lots of sacrifice. Just for you guys. I'm doing it all for you guys. You could turn that lemonade into a, a virgin Tiki drink pretty quick, I think, though. Right, that could totally work. All right, so I'm gonna get it started on these guys. Probably gonna do a pretty thick outline for like sort of the surround of each mug, and then we'll get the the more detailed pins out to do some of the the inner detail pieces. And then if there's time, we'll grab the markers and do some shading. But pretty excited about this uh, Witch Doctor's Potion idea. I think this could be really cool um, when we get this one made. So I am working with a new company um, to produce the Tiki Mugs. I can't really say much about it yet. I'll have to wait till they're ready to talk about it. But, um, you know, theoretically, a lot of the things that I'm designing on here you know, are going to be produced in the future. So that's good news. And then no real update on the Tipsy Rum Barrel yet. We're kind of disappointed, but I've I've asked Tiki Farm for an update. I haven't really heard back from them. So I know they were maybe moving their offices or something. So who knows with COVID, it could be taking longer for them to sort of get into their new spot. I'm not sure, but you know, we'll, we'll deal with it as best we can. But hopefully we'll have some some news sooner rather than later. 
That would be nice. Quench Press says, Aloha, mahalo. Right back at you, buddy. Good to see you. Hope you're off to a good start this week. Enjoying yourself. Mm -mm. Man, let me tell you. The fresh pineapple and coconut is the key to that blue wine. Man, that's good. So, so tasty. So what do you guys think? Should we come up with names for the three different witch doctors here? I mean, it can't be like Eeny, Miny, and Mo or anything like that, but I think we could probably come up with some names for them. Maybe something Polynesian inspired. Might be cool. Let me know what you guys think. Yeah. I think part of the trick with these is gonna be to get a lot of like overlapping depth on everything. So we can imply that with the markers and do some shading. But just to get the elements that are, you know, we don't want them to be look flat. We want them to sort of like be like carved in and have a lot of depth. that just give it a really nice look so what are you drinking tonight quench i think we've got quite the variety of beverages going here tonight everything from whiskey and coke to lemonade everything in between Doing the blue Hawaiian. So I was asking it, well, you know, what you guys have been watching on Netflix. So Christy and I stumbled onto that um, Homefront movie with Jason Stratham and a bunch of other people. And I had not heard of it. But I was like, wow, you know, this thing has like a huge cast for a Netflix film and Written by Sylvester Stallone and all that. It was an okay little action film. And I saw that it was actually released in 2013. And apparently it came out and just like flopped in the theaters in America. I guess it did really good worldwide, but it didn't do anything here. And so Netflix smartly bought it up recently, or, you know, the rights. And, um you know, pretty much released it as like a, hey, this is new to you, because nobody's seen it here. And uh, I think it was a big, a big hit for him. It was crazy. And it was, you know, look, it's not Shakespeare, but it was a pretty good little action film. And it was nice to see Winona Ryder playing like a villain role. I kind of relished in that a little bit. Hey, Chow Time. Good to see you. Chow Time says, hey, hey, hey. Good to see you, Chow Time. It's been a while. Hope you and Randy are doing well. Um, I don't know if you guys have made it out to Epcot Festival of the Arts or not, but... I know my buddy Danny was out there, I think, last weekend. And uh, I, haven't, I haven't... No one said anything to me about it, but um, I'd heard maybe they were going to have my my new um, Empire Strikes Back artwork there. So I have to watch out for that one. Uh, Tomcat says, just posted something on Discord, Tiki Carving by Pierre Mosley at Undertow this Sunday. Oh, 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 that sounds cool. And Christy will be out of town, so that might be something I could do. But at Undertow Phoenix? I don't know, man. That's a pretty small space. I would imagine it has to already be sold out. If they're doing it at Scottsdale, then I, I would you'd imagine there'd be a lot of space. Uh, Child Time says, nope, not, not, not going to Epcot because you're not there. Oh, well, that's too nice. Um, you know, I can't even be mad about it, but um, no one... I, I have received zero contact or phone calls or emails or anything this year, so... I don't know if they're just doing everything different because of COVID. I don't know anything. And when I tried to inquire about it in December, 
um, you know, none of my emails or messages were returned. So I don't know. I was I was hoping to continue my streak. I've been invited to all of them up till now, but uh, I guess whoever at either Acme or Disney, you know, maybe I wasn't at the top of their mind this year. So I don't know. Very sad. Very sad. I will not dwell on it. Uh, but thank you, Chow. Uh, Tomcat redeemed to hydrate. Cheers to you. Tomcat says, um, yes, it'll be, um, oh, the temporary location at Valley Ho. So yeah, it'll be Scottsdale. Hmm, that's interesting. I don't know, Quench Press, should we risk it? I'm supposed to get, a, I, well, no, Christy is getting her first vaccination tomorrow and asked her spouse, I might get one, but they don't know for sure. So I just have to go and wait and see. But um, we shall see. But regardless, even if I didn't go to it, it's just cool that they're doing it. Like I said, Phoenix is having a real tiki renaissance right now. It's kind of cool to see. I mean, I think Outward Danon is there. He's going to have more tiki bars than anybody. And I, it's good to see Valley Ho embrace. I mean, they've definitely been a part of tiki culture here in the past, but it's good to see them doing something with it sort of right now. So there's gonna be a ton of shading and stuff to do to this one when, when these are all outlined, but uh, I think we'll just get them all outlined first, maybe. I don't know, because then I'll be dragging my hand through it. So we'll see, we'll see, but it'll be fun. But no, that's really cool. I think, you know, when it, it doesn't matter if it's tiki bars or comic shops or Star Wars events, there's, Places that are just there to do business, and then there's places that support the bigger community. And I like that to see that Undertow and Valley Ho, you know, obviously it's good for their business, but they're they're really soon to be making an effort at supporting and growing the Tiki community. Uh, and I think that's there's something noble about that. You know, they're they're giving back as they're, you know, asking the fans to support them. So pretty cool, really. Gotta gotta dig that. So yeah, so this one is the Witch Doctor's Potion. So pretty pretty excited about this. I think I think it's got a lot of potential. A lot of fun to get some like really crazy, you know, Witch Doctor Tiki mask kind of things going on in there. Although I gotta tell you guys, I'm really just dying to get this tipsy rum barrel thing all finalized and going, but you know, some people warned me, they said this tiki stuff, it all takes a lot longer than you think, and they, they were right. Uh, Chow Time says, Randy and I close on our house in March. That's so exciting. And then that's still in the Orlando area. You two are gonna stay around that area somewhere. That's congratulations, you guys. That's really exciting. Kudos to you. I think that gets that should get like a round of cheers from everybody. So cheers to Chow Time and Randy on your home. And Chow says, yes, we're gonna stay in the Orlando metropolitan greater Disney area, <laughs> if that's a thing. <laughs> so what do you guys think about the news that um, uh, Jungle Cruise is getting some of the scenes doing a makeover, try to maybe get rid of a little bit of the, uh, some of the less respectful, less respectful depictions of, of certain cultures, I guess is the best way to put it. 
Um, Chow Time says the new house has solar panels, an insulated garage, and a fire pit. Wow, that sounds awesome. I mean, as a as a car guy, the insulated garage thing sounds really appealing to me. You know, at our old place, I had a swamp cooler in the garage. That was pretty nice. But one of our neighbors had like real air conditioning in his garage. And I was like, wow. In Phoenix, are you kidding me? Like that's that's the dream right there, man. Chow says, uh, garage floor is epoxy. Oh, that does sound nice. Randy says, I'm converting the garage into the Clark and Dagger office. Awesome. Congratulations, guys. I hope, I mean, every time I look at your Etsy, your Clark and Dagger Etsy, it looks like it's going really well. So congratulations to you. It's going to be, you guys are going to be like um, Evan and, I can't think of the YouTube channel. Evan and somebody, I can't think of her name, where they're always doing all their projects out in their garage. No, that's awesome, guys. That's great news. So excited for you. We may be able to join you guys as homeowners in 2022 if, uh, if Christy's job doesn't go away. So we shall see her school. They had, they lost a bunch of their top people uh, right around New Year's. A lot of them quit or resigned. Uh, no one really knows why, what's going on, but there is a hiring freeze, which means that none of those people can be replaced. And one of the people that resigned was sort of like anti Christy I was trying to eliminate her position. So we're hoping that, you know, whoever comes in will be pro Christy. Um, and then of course comics was horrible in 2020. So, you know, maybe it'll make a comeback this year too. And that would really, really help things out. Oh, thanks for saying you're rooting for us. That's really kind. Thank you. Um, Chow says, isn't Property Brothers out there? I mean, I've heard of the show, and maybe they are. I don't know anything about that, though. But the irony is, is that I would say maybe something as high as 6 out of 10 of Christie's friends that she plays tennis with are big-time real estate people who, like, you know, own tons of rental properties or uh, investment properties and stuff like that. So, And the weird thing is we owned a house in the past, and we... we Never had any problems. We made all the payments. We wrote out the financial collapse, all that. It's just after the financial collapse, they changed the rules for self-employed people. So it's really, really hard now. <laughs> Tom Cat's like, the Antichrist? What? <laughs> so I got to tell you guys that um, on Netflix, Christy and I started... The, the Winx show, Fate, whatever it's called, whatever they're calling it, but it's, you know, the old, um, I don't know, what was it, what was the cartoon and toys and stuff called in the late 90s, early 2000s, the Winx, Winx Adventures, Winx something. Now they made a live action out of that. And it's, it's so, it's like, it's like, Harry Potter meets Mean Girls or something. And it's like just the right amount of like magic and witchcraft and like catty women that Christy's like hooked. She's like hooked in. So we're, we're checking that one out. I think Winx Club is maybe what the cartoon was called. I don't remember. I never saw it, but um, it's just funny that there's like a live action series now and it's all like super serious and stuff. But here's my take on it. So first of all, the magic in the world of Winx is supposed to be based on the four elements. Now, you can all, I can hear you right now, you're all saying what the four elements are. Let me tell you what they are on the Winx show. Earth, water, the mind, and air. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Does that sound right to you? Does that sound right? Uh, and by the way, fire is part of the air, so. And so is lightning. So do it that way you will. Um, all right, I'll get back to Winx in just a second. 
Uh, Chell says, yeah, showing a constant W2 can be rough for an artist. Yeah, that's true. Especially the way things are going in comics right now. Uh, Quinch says, my drink tonight, Mount Gay Triple Cask Rum, uh, Diplomatica Man Mantuano Rum. Sorry, I can't say that. Plantation Rum, Caravedo Pisco, uh, Agua Coco Leaf Liqueur, Bitter Truth Falernum, and Demera Simple Syrup. Yeah, man, that sounds really good. Randy Cake says, that sounds like my kind of show. Yeah, Randy, if you like that stuff, you, you'll definitely get a kick out of it. Um, Chow's asking Quinch Press about the Demera Simple Syrup. Uh, Tonkit says, no, I'm saying Captain Planet. <laughs> um, Quinch says, I watched about an episode and a half of Fate Winks and thought it was just okay. Oh, I'm not saying it's good by any stretch of the imagination. I'm saying it could be a guilty pleasure if you're friends or you or whatever are like my wife. Um, so I told you about the, the four elements, right? And how they don't line up with what we think the four elements are. So the next part is all these people have magic, right? And mostly it's the female characters that have magic. But they also like this, the magic school has like their own army of like assassin jujitsu ninja fighters that don't have magic, I guess. I, I don't know. And so it's like, wait, what would you rather fight? 10 people with swords or like a badass witch that can like blow you away with fire or something or control your mind. So I'm like, wait, we have all this magic, but then you need like a standing army of people that have nothing to fight with except for like their fist and swords. I don't know how that's going to play out. Other than in episode two, a bunch of those military people just get fucked up by like one mystical creature. So I'm thinking... If you're the school of magic, just use your magic to fend off things, and maybe you don't need the army of people with like jujitsu and swords. That's just me, though. Quinch press, redeem to hydrate. Cheers to you, Quinch. And so, of course, the blonde, the blonde girl, she's a princess. Yeah, she's part of some big magical family. Because of course she is, right? Um, and there's, it's all sorts of like slutty romance and hookups and all this stuff. So Christy's really into it, of course. Um, and so the first thing you got to know about Winx is there's lots and lots of British accents in the show. You got your upper class British accents and your lower class British accents. And they go on and on and on from there, right? And then there's the one American accent girl. And she's like the star of the show, of course. And you get like one guy from Downton Abbey for the girls to swoon over. So that part's good. Um, but again, if you like Harry Potter and you like Mean Girls, you're probably going to like Winks. Chow Time says, are you drinking the blue milk tonight? Sort of. I'm having a blue Hawaiian tonight. And it's got the real cream of coconut in it. So it's like blue milk. And I would say if they serve this at Galaxy's Edge, that's all I'd be drinking all the time, man. Mm -mm. Cheers to you guys. Really good one tonight. Like I said, it's, it's all the fresh pineapple. Makes it so good. Uh, Chow says a cranberry old fashioned for me. Oh, that sounds nice. Uh, I, I was gonna ask rum old fashioned or Whiskey old fashioned, and then I just knew better than to ask, so. I did have a really good rum old fashioned in Aspen, Colorado, of all places. They did a really nice one there. It's some like, it wasn't a tiki bar or anything, but it's just like a vintage, like an old, one of those old like hotel, like famous old ho ho ski lodge places that had a nice bar. The tiki joints in Aspen were kind of just meh. There was like two of them, but I think there's supposed to be a good one there, but it wasn't where we were. Uh, Chow time, redeemed to hydrate. Thank you, Chow. Witch Press says, I made the Demera simple syrup. It's just equal parts sugar and water, and you get the Demera from Amazon. And he's put the link in there for you. Very thoughtful, very thoughtful. All right, if you guys come up with any cool 
names for our three witch doctors here. We'll put those in contention. I'm still just doing the, the rough inks. I think once we get into the shading and stuff, this is going to start to look pretty cool, though. So yeah, I, I could I could go on about how ludicrous this Wink show is for hours, but you guys would be bored by that. But um, I definitely say Randy Cake should give it a shot. I mean, I don't want to be sexist, but I think you know any of the female viewers, if you like, sort of like period romance kind of stuff mixed in with Harry Potter, you'll probably be okay with it. Tomcat says, all I got is Bert and Ernie, so I'm one short. Ernie Cake says, Mean Girls is my jam. So, of course, with our, so the the girls, the, the magicians or the witches, they're not called witches. I don't, they just have powers, I guess. They have magic. Um, they're, they all live in the same, like, dorm room or house or whatever, the, the main, the main characters. And so we've got... Oh, I like the ting and tang. That's pretty good. You're off to a good start there, Whitney. <laughs> walla walla, that's good. You just need one more. Um, ting tang, walla walla. Is Bing Bang gonna be the last one? <laughs> I'd be okay with that. There we go, Bing Bang. I think I think those names work really good. Ting tang, walla walla, Bing Bang. I I I will have to write that down so I don't forget because that that works for me. Cheers to you, Whitney. That's 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 the way to go right there. Um, all right, so we've got the mean girl. She's the blonde princess. And her mother's an evil queen or something. And then we've got the swimmer girl. She has the power to control water. And she's like the uptight, uh, not really uptight, but she's like keeps to herself and goes on like long, mysterious swims and who knows what else. And then we've got the girl that has the control of plants. Now you're probably thinking sexy poison ivy. You're wrong. This is gonna be the sort of like the homely girl who's got a bad self image and she's really shy and her father's part of like the Ministry of Magic. And so she's like the outcast, but she has the, the power over plants. And then we've got our, uh, the mind reader girl. And she can hear everybody's thoughts and it's driving her crazy. So she has to have her headphones and music on all the time because, you know, if you could hear the thoughts of a hundred teenage, horny teenagers, you'd go fucking crazy too, right? And then we have our hero and she has the power of fire. Only she's like fire starter. She can't control it. And maybe she's part evil. We don't know. She doesn't know. Because why? because she's a changeling. Oh yeah, a changeling. And just like the whole thing with the the different uh, earth, wind, and fire and stuff, this changeling thing doesn't mean what you think it means, no. Changeling in their universe just means you were swapped at birth with someone else in the hospital. That's what a changeling is. So anyway, it's a magical, lovely show with Boys and girls who can do magic and fight against evil monsters. So, enjoy. Uh, Chow Time says yes. Randy Cake says yes. They're both loving the name. Winnie says, I'm supposed to say that Katie suggested the names after I posted the lyrics. Yeah, I think that was perfectly done, Whitney and Katie. Well played, you two. Uh, she's too busy knitting Bernie Sanders mittens to suggest it herself. Also, also good. I know, I think we've already seen like a Bernie Samuel, Sanders enamel pins. Um, I saw a sketch of a tiki mug. I don't think they're really gonna make it because by the time it got made, everybody would be over it, but I thought it was funny. Uh, Quinch says, bring the water to a low boil. This is how to make the Demera simple syrup. Uh, bring the water to a low boil and slowly stir in the sugar, or it could be the British Bake Off, or it could be the show we're talking about. I mean, we've got boiling water, we've got magical sugar, who knows? Uh, stir until dissolved, let cool, bottle, add just a little alcohol to increase the shelf life. I use rum, but most recipes recommend something like vodka, which doesn't have a lot of flavor. Store in the fridge. <laughs> Tomcat's like, Zam Whistle? <laughs> I can't even say it. Zam Whistle? Uh, so not Zam then? <laughs> I think if we did the Z names, it'd have to be like... Uh, 
like on uh, Disenchanted where it's like what Zog, Yog. I don't know what the, was the X one because if it was XOG, it would still be Zog again, but something like that. Disenchanted season three. I know some people are liking it more than others. Um, I saw a really good thing on the internet about it today, though, that just basically said, uh, Disenchanted Season 3 is a mess, and I love it all the more for it. And I kind of think that's how I'm feeling about it this season. I'm like, you know, it's on Netflix. They probably know it's their last season. The backgrounds are just spectacularly, beautifully done this season. Um, I'm not, I don't know how I feel about the whole, like, King Zog being mad thing. It's kind of annoying. Like, it gets a little obnoxious, but... They're, um, they're definitely like playing with all the tropes from the past two seasons and bringing back lots of Easter eggs and characters and lots of self-referential stuff about how they're just making it up as they go and everything. Um, so so sort of interesting, really. Um, looks like Quench Press has finished it. I'm, I'm still watching the season, so I don't know how, how it ends. He says it ends on a cliffhanger, though. Well, I don't know, man. I mean, you know, Netflix, they're usually pretty brutal about that, like three seasons and out stuff. But being that this is like a Matt Groening thing, um, you know, maybe, maybe they'll keep it going. Who knows? Quinch says the madness thing definitely got old. Yeah, I think so too, Quinch. That's, that's really the only part. I mean, I get what they're going for, but that's kind of the only part that's been annoying to me. Um, but I like that they're bringing back some other characters. Unicorn Dab! Thank you, let's do this. Thanks for slapping a sticker and starting us off on our new run towards the sticker party. Thank you, man. <clears throat> so yeah, I've, I've been enjoying it. Uh... Oh, Tomcat says, no, I meant about the changeling thing. Uh, Zam was the changeling bounty hunter that they chased through Coruscant. Yeah, I knew who Zam was. Uh, I thought you were just saying Zam is one of the names for the, the Tiki... Uh, the witch doctors, but now I get it. Yeah, I was like, I know who Zam is, but I didn't know what you were referring for. Yeah, Zam. Yeah, like the whole, the whole thing with like a changeling is someone who swapped at birth. Like, that's not what people think a changeling is. I don't think so. Whatever. Um, Chat time says Cobra Kai. You know, that's one I still haven't watched, but I know everyone and their dog is watching it, and I have to do a Cobra Kai sketch this week or next week, so I'll have to get into it. Uh, Quinch says, Cloud Abrata and Nick 2 or Ricky Tiki Tavi. Those are also good ones. Also good. Um, Tomcat's like, oh good, I was worried you didn't know who Zam was. <laughs> Funny. I'm sure that Joe Crony has drawn Zam and I've colored Zam, so no worries there. Whitney says, I haven't watched the third season yet, but soon. Yeah, I mean, I'm digging it. It's not it's not perfect by any means, but I do think it's um it's beautiful to look at. Like they've just really perfected their their style, their visual style for that. So that's been one of my favorite parts of it. For sure. For sure. I like you're like oh, I don't think you know who Zam was. It's like like I get, I get most of the most of the references. I mean, I got the Blade Runner reference last week. I mean, I think if it was like a you know Logan's Run reference, I would probably get Dark Crystal. I would probably get. <laughs> Whitney says, "Did you watch all the Expendables?" No, but I did, did tell Christy that they're all available online, but I, we did watch the Homefront movie with Jason Stratham, so that's kind of what what we did instead. And like I was saying, I, I liked that one. I thought uh, Winona Ryder made a good villain. Um, the cast was pretty cool. You know, it was just a cheesy action flick. There was nothing really special about it, but it was fun, and it had a good cast, and, um, and I liked it. It was good. And then the fact that it was actually from 2013 just kind of blew my mind, because I just had never heard of it. Uh, Quinch Press says, no, a changeling child can be a human child that was replaced with a fairy at birth. Well, that's what they're saying. That's what they're saying in this story. 
If you believed your child was not a human child, parents would leave their child in a forest in the hopes they would be switched back. Well, that's kind of what they're going for here at Quench Press. Uh, Tomcat's like, oh, I, I feel so silly for ever doubting you. <laughs> yeah, right. We all know it's, it's just all down to how much I've been drinking. That's kind of like everything. It's all about that. Mm-mm. Oh, thanks. Tomcat Redeemed Hydrate. Thank you, Tomcat. Cheers to you. We're on to number two, by the way. Very tasty. Oh, man. So good. So, so good. So, I don't know if you guys have seen or, or watched any of the cooking stuff, but Christy's really big into all the cooking shows. And so at Christmas time, she watched like one episode of the British Bake Off, like the Christmas season or whatever. And she's like, no, this isn't for me. And I was kind of surprised. I was like, really? Hmm. Kind of thought that would be for her. Well, since then she's watched, I think two full seasons of that show. <laughs> And it's getting ready to start like a third. So it was for her after all. <laughs> uh, child time redeemed to hydrate. Cheers to you. But I have to say that watching a British reality cooking show compared to an American reality cooking show, it is night and day. They're like so... Polite's not the right word. Um, maybe insecure is the word. Like all the British bakers for the most part seem to be like, you know, kind of humble and insecure and just happy to be there. And like, you don't ever see them talk smack about their opponents, even if maybe they want to. And they're all like, you know, when the other person does good, it's all very congratulatory, congratulatory and stuff. And, even if it's fake, it's like really good sportsmanship. And I was telling Christy, I was like, you should watch this instead of the American cooking competition shows. Because the American shows, it's all like, you know, I will destroy you in the kitchen with my great cooking. You will suffer at the hands of my pots and pans. You know, and then they're all like, but then of course in the American shows, they're like, well, what are you going to do with the prize money? And like, I'm going to give it all to a charity, you know, or I'm going to take my mother on a world cruise or something like that. So... It's all this like super machismo and then like a lot of like showing off like, you know, how, what a great person you are. But I'm like, but the cooking is like secondary to all of that showy kind of stuff. Where on the British show, it seems to be like, hey, um, can you actually cook this thing? Okay, you're good. Oh, you can't? Bye bye And like, that's kind of it. Um, the drama is in the actual like, you know, the ability to like bake and make the thing you're supposed to make. And they're judged on how well they did, you know, how well they completed the recipe, not like what kind of smack they can talk or what kind of like bullshit they can get away with the judges. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, Quinch Press says they use that changeling thing in Outlander. The main character who is from the future tries to save a child that was left in a tree overnight because the parents believed it was a changeling child. And then it comes back to haunt her a few episodes later. Wow. All right. Well, I'm going to backpedal then on my on my uh, complaining about the way they're using the word changeling. I'll just say fantasy sci-fi versus like space sci-fi. <laughs> uh, Quinch says, Ted Lasso got renewed for season three even though season two just started filming. I think that's great news. I loved that show. I'm trying to get Christy to watch it. She hasn't watched it yet. But I really enjoyed Ted Lasso. Um, I am not a sports person. I don't watch ESPN. You know, I go to Christie's tennis meets. I like that because she's doing it, but like I'm not I'm not into sports, not at all. And you don't have to like sports to like Ted Lasso because it's really not about soccer. It's about the characters and the team and all the struggles they're going through. And they make you you know care about these characters. 
and they give the character stakes and they they're not two-dimensional and uh, I was really impressed with that show so I'm very excited to hear they're doing more seasons and being from Kansas City there are so many hilarious faux Kansas City products in that show like t-shirts and hats and things like that that they're not real but they're but if you're from there you know what they're alluding to so that was kind of entertaining for me too Tomcat says, you know what, that's exactly why we always enjoyed Master Chef Australia, but did not enjoy the American Master Chef. Interesting, because the difference in like the bluster and the smack talk and all that stuff. Huh? I get that, man. I totally, totally get that. It's just kind of funny. I mean, I know it's sort of the American way, all the trash talk and all that stuff, but it just, you know, I'm like, I just don't find that kind of drama entertaining. I'm like, you know, and I don't need to know their backstories or about their families or anything like that. It's just like, you know, show me that they care about the task that they're being asked to complete and have, show me the, the drama in that, you know, the struggle in that, and I'll be way more interested. Ciao, Ty, redeemed to hydrate. Cheers to you, ciao. Oh, that's good. It's good. Uh, Quinch Press says, My friend told me a few days ago that she is hooked on the Great British Garden Revival show. Oh, interesting. I saw pre uh, on Netflix some sort of advert for their glass blowing show. And Christy's a big glass art fan. But then I saw that it was like Americans and they're like yelling at each other in the preview and stuff. I was like, no, she wouldn't like that probably. I mean, she might like the things they make, but... It looks like it's a bunch of faux drama instead of just about the glass art. Maybe we'll check it out sometime. I don't know, but the trailer was a little bit of a disappointment. Uh, Quinch says, Ted Lasso has some of the best developed characters who grow and change. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, Quinch says, you should try A Discovery of Witches with Christy. Oh, what, what service is A Discovery of Witches on? Uh, Tomcat says, do you like motorsports, specifically Formula One? wonder if you would like Drive to Survive on Netflix. You know, I don't mind Formula One. I like other types of racing more, uh, like MotoGP, uh, Dakar and Rally, uh, World Endurance Championship, that kind of stuff. But Formula One's okay. Uh, I've seen some of the, the like, Race to Le Mans, like, uh, reality shows in the past, so I would probably like the Drive to Survive thing. Um, Whitney says, the backstory reminds me how much I hate looking for recipes online. I don't care that the biscuits remind you of your grandma and long winter walks along the farm. Just give me the recipe. Yeah, I think those recipe sites are a lot like other types of sites where they're trying to get so many ads crammed on the page that the actual recipe is like you know, 10 minutes into the blog kind of thing. Um, and yeah, you're just like, you're like, I'm here for a specific reason. Google told me to come look at your site and now you're just trying to feed me a bunch of filler while I'm trying to find that thing. Um, Quinch Press says it's on AMC, which I got through an Alan Prime. Okay, I'll check it out. We've got, I think we have AMC just on our normal Cox here, so we should, or Cox Cable thing, so we should really get that. DVR or something. Chow Time says, did you watch Ford versus Ferrari? Not only did I watch Ford versus Ferrari, um, I met two of the stunt drivers at an event and they autographed a hat and a poster for me. So my dad, as you guys know, was a mechanic. He was an airline mechanic and a car mechanic before that. And I grew up, he was a Mustang guy. And so I heard all the Carol Shelby stories over and over and over and over again from the time I was born. Um, you know, my dad never had a Shelby Mustang, but he had Mustang after Mustang after Mustang. Uh, in 1968, he ordered one new. 
exactly how he wanted it with like the big motor and everything. And, um, and we were working class and uh, he had to sell that when I came along years later. But um, yeah, he was, he, was, he was big into that. Like I think Shelby was one of his heroes. And I'll never forget though, he tells me, he, well he, he's no longer with us, but he would tell me um, that he had the opportunity at some point I think in the 70s or the early 80s to buy a real Shelby Cobra for I think it was $9,000. Now I'm sure that that was a lot of money at the time, um, but you know those cars are like a million plus all day now, so $9,000 seems incredibly inexpensive, <laughs> you know. I was like, come on dad, you could have bought that for nine grand and then I'd have a retirement now. Yeah, he he was a he was a car guy through and through, which is where I get it from. And um, the sad thing was is that in his later years, uh, because of his medical complications, he was no longer allowed to drive. Um, and that was I know that was a big a big blow to him um, because he loved he loved cars and he loved to drive and he loved aircraft. And he just you know he was so sick he just couldn't do any of that stuff anymore. But yeah, definitely big time into it. <laughs> Chow's like, I almost spat out my drink. Yeah, somewhere I've got a photo of me and, and my former neighbor, and we're standing between like the Ford GT and the Ferrari from the movie. Because um, out in Scottsdale, where I used to live, it's huge car crazy. They have the big auctions out there every year, and Barrett Jackson and all that stuff. And so there's always lots of lots and lots of car events. Before COVID, I think Arizona had the longest running car show in America, and it was every Saturday at the Rock and Roll McDonald's in Scottsdale, and it had gone on for, you know, whatever it is, 30 or 40 something years without interruption. So yeah, it's not like SoCal here though. Like SoCal has like the automotive culture, like bar none. I mean, you go out to SoCal and there's, you know, there's 18 year olds and 20 year olds and 30 year olds driving around in classic cars that are just, you know, perfectly kept and run great and everything like that. And you come out here to Scottsdale and it's a little bit more of the older crowd. The younger car enthusiasts here are more into like big SUVs and stuff like that. You, you'll see the occasional younger, like Instagram millionaire or something in like a Lamborghini or a Ferrari. But for the most part, it's the, the affluent kids out here like SUVs and that kind of stuff. So a little bit different culture. I think in SoCal, it's it's still all about really the sports cars and hitting the mountain roads and getting up in the twisties and the canyons and stuff, which is nice. But yeah, chow time. Like next time we all get to meet up in Orlando, I'll, I'll tell you some car stories for sure. Um, uh, Quench Press says the watch on AMC set in Terry Pritchett's Discworld is kind of fun. Not great, but decent. Okay, I'll at least look at, I'll check it out, I'll watch a preview or something. Oh man, so, so tasty. All right, let's grab some markers. Start putting some details on these guys. Uh, what do we want to do here? Um, let's start just by getting some shape. Let's get some shape into just the sort of the cylindricalness of the, of the mugs. Uh, Chow Time says, I still want that 69 Mustang. Gotta go John Wick. <laughs> so, my dad, I can't even count the number of Mustangs that he had before and after I was born. And other like Ford cars too. He would have like a, you know, an old Cougar or an old, uh, oh gosh, what was their big, it doesn't matter. He would just have all their big engine cars and stuff. But um, uh, my first car was a 66 Mustang. And so he had bought it as pretty run down. And we spent about, like he gave it to me, I think when I was 14. And we spent just two years like 
doing the body work and he rebuilt the motor and all that stuff. So it was it was a lot of fun. While it lasted, it did get it did get T-boned pretty hardcore. But that's what happens when you're 16 and <laughs> you're driving a you know 300 plus horsepower vintage car. Um, I think my first speeding ticket in that car was for 125 in a 55 zone. So yeah, that was that was pretty much how things started for me. <laughs> and again, when I say my first car was a 66 Mustang, do not think that I'm from a wealthy background or anything like that. It was a rusted through shell of a car when he brought it home. Uh, his best friend ran a body shop and so they would, they would get these sort of like used up cool old cars and the, my dad would do all the mechanical work and his friend would do all the body work and then they would turn around and sell them. Or flip them in today's parlance. This was long before anybody thought about that kind of stuff. Uh, Tomcat says, I still think you should check out Drive to Survive. Um, we're giving you quite a to-do list. Well, hey, I, I want to check it out. I definitely want to check it out. Um, I got to meet... Michael Schumacher in 2013 in Monterey. Uh, that was pretty cool. I mean, who would have thought that would be like one of the last times, you know, get a chance to to meet somebody like that before he was in his big accident and everything. Now, you guys know me. I'm not an autograph hound, so I didn't, didn't, po didn't ask him for a photo or, or autograph or anything like that. I just... Listened to him speak and got to say hi, so that was pretty cool. But that Monterey event, you know, that's like Comic-Con. It used to be so inexpensive and now it's just kind of blown up and gotten crazy. Quinch Press says, I went back to the free Booters Foster for the cocktail number two. A slight change though, using Elijah Craig bourbon this week instead of Maker's Mark 46. That does sound good. It does sound very good. Um, Christy was going to pick up some Woodford Reserve bourbon because I, I drink a lot of Maker's Mark and I was like, you know, just grab a Bullet or a Woodford or just something so I've, I've, I've got a little something different so I'm not having the same thing all the time. And she uh, accidentally got the, the, the Woodford rye instead of the bourbon. And, you know, I mean, I'm not the biggest rye fan. I mean, it's good in certain cocktails, you know, Sazerac or something like that. But, you know... I, I think I do like just regular bourbon a little bit more than a lot of rye. Um, but I have to say that, you know, the Woodford rye is not bad. Like, I I liked it better than some of the other ryes that I've had. And, uh, you know, while I still think I like bourbon better, it, it gives me a little just something different to, to, you know, put in the mix. So kind of like the Elijah Craig. You know, you got, you got something when you got your go-to, but then you got something else, which is kind of nice. Uh, Chow Time says, Elijah Craig is a solid pour. Yep, that's true. Yeah, and I do agree with you, Chow. Sazerac rye is awesome. Um, I don't know that I've had Old Elk, though, but yeah, Sazerac is, is good. I like Sazerac a lot. And I don't dislike the, um, I don't dislike the wood for rye. It, it, it's good, but it's not great. We'll put that. I think that's a distinction we can make with with lots of different things you know you're like it's good i would have it but there's other things that would be higher on my list like the sazerac yeah i haven't had an old elk either and neither quench press so that'll be one to check out for sure um what we got here this is the 20. let's go like two shades darker Mmm, so tasty, so tasty. All right, so let's get some, let's start to get some shadow worked in here. I really want there to be a lot of like, the visual look of like overlapping elements. I think that's something that'll be important for this. So, you know, cause these tiki mugs, they're, it's more of like an embossed look when they get made. 
And so the more you can give the impression of like some overlapping elements, the more you get that like sense of depth to the sculpt where you can't really, you know, you can't really have a lot of depth of surface in a lot of places. Just it gets too complicated for the mold to release and everything. So the more we can apply it with some like, you know, overlap and some, some subtle areas of depth, the better. Because um, that's kind of what brings it to life. We really want that, that, the mask, the witch doctor's mask to really feel like it's like out in front of his body, you know? And I think that's, that's going to be the key thing. And I haven't really thought about glazes too much because I think that'll depend on my production partners on on what they, you know, what they want to spend and what they want to do. But I think it would look good. You know, we could do like some engraved texture kind of stuff on it and do like a a rub glaze might be cool. I was even thinking it might be cool if like everything but the mask was like one glaze and then maybe the mask had like the rub glaze so it looks a little bit more natural finish or something i don't know but you know there's there's definitely some options there <laughs> chow time says woodford is like your chain restaurants dependable but not phenomenal yes exactly and that's then that's what i told christy i was like you know it's like i just need like an inexpensive but decent bottle to put into my weekly mix and i was like you know a bullet a woodford something like that so i think it's a you know it's important because it's so easy, especially if you have nice bottles that people have given you, or maybe you spent the money on a nice bottle yourself. It's so easy to get spoiled by that and just you want to drink it every day because it's so good. And, you know, I'm just not in a position where I can afford to, you know, replace like a $100 or $200 bottle of something every, every couple of weeks, you know? <laughs> so I'm like, let's mix in the... 20, 30, and $40 bottles in there too. <laughs> uh, Quinch Press says, I have a Whistle Pig Piggyback Rye six year, lip service rye, and my favorite is the Malahat Spirits Rye. Malahat Spirits is an awesome distillery in San Diego. Oh, that's really cool, man. I hadn't heard of that one. That's really cool. Yeah, it's fun, like, I think when you're into your spirits, it's it's just as obsessive as any other kind of, like, collecting mentality. But you're, you use those up, right? So kind of the fun thing is that when you use up a bottle, you then have the excuse to then go discover something else, you know? Um, and that's kind of a, kind of a cool thing that you don't necessarily get with other kinds of collectibles. You know, if you collect action figures, once you have the entire set, you have them, you know, you, okay, maybe you have to go find the, the variants or the, you know, the, whatever the next thing is, you have to get, get your next fix as a collector. But if you are into spirits, you, you're like, okay, well I finished that bottle and it was okay, but it wasn't great. And then you go find something else. And then you find one you really like, you're like, okay, I need another one of those, you know? And so, it's kind of a fun hobby because you're always in a position to sort of like replenish and find new things. And not, I don't think there's a lot of hobbies like that, you know? Uh, Chow Time cheered 10 bits. Thank you so much, Chow. Uh, Chow Time says, my whiskey collection went from one bottle to like 20 since COVID. Yeah, at Christmas time, I think a lot of people got me alcohol. You know, it's just had it shipped to me. So yeah, between bourbon and scotch and then like rum, I, I yeah, it definitely tripled over here too. Chow says, bourbon is another animal though. Oh, I love bourbon. I love it so much. Um, what's What's... Not your top bourbons, Chow, but like what's in your normal rotation? Like if you had one or two bottles that you were gonna, you know, sip from every week, what would it be? Uh, Quinch says, I had a Woodford Reserve bourbon that was a barrel pick. The bar in San Diego that had it sent someone to the distillery in Kentucky and picked a barrel. It was definitely better than off the shelf. So here's my Woodford story. Um, 
So I used to be in a joint barrel at Maker's Mark, but my barrel came due and so I got my bottles out of that. But way back in like the early 2000s, um, whenever, kind of around the time that, I don't, I don't know what, what year Woodford started getting big again, but I could have bought into a barrel of Woodford for like, I think $1,700 back then. And I had it back then because comics were doing really good. And I think now that same buy-in is like seventeen or twenty thousand dollars. So it's definitely uh, tells you how how much the market has changed for bourbon over that time period. Um, but the way they do that is you buy into that barrel, um, and so that bar in San Diego they might be in that barrel by themselves, or they might be in it with other bars. Some casinos, like in Vegas, will have entire barrels to themselves. And then when that barrel matures that's your barrel you get all of the bottles out of that barrel and you, you no one else is serving that from that barrel than you and when you buy the barrel you get to work with the distiller and they can like modify the flavors and notes and stuff for the way you like it so it's pretty it's a pretty cool program it just got real expensive uh chow time says willet pot still has been my go-to recently yeah christy likes the willet like this one the few the few bourbons she'll even drink uh, Quinch says, I have Buffalo Trace Bourbon. That's a private barrel selection by White Rabbit here in Gilbert. It's excellent. Buffalo Trace is another good place. Um, if you've done the, the Bourbon Trail, that's a great one to hit up. Um, you know, they own a few of the distilleries. Um, what, Blanton's and I think maybe Willet. Um, but their tasting room is really nice and it has like everything. And they, they definitely do a good job. Uh, Tomcat says, from 1 to 20, shouldn't it be the other way because of COVID? <laughs> and Chow's like, not when some of these run for 200 to 300 bucks in the secondary market. Um, oh, and Quinch says he still hasn't had Willet. Yeah, I forgot which distillery it was, but they were talking about how some of these bottles are so limited that, you know, they're going up in, in price one or two weeks after they've been released it's like that fast and it's pretty crazy you know it's pretty pretty nuts and there's definitely collectors out there with much deeper pockets than i'll ever have and so i just am lucky to get what i get uh chow says i scored a eagle rare and a blanton's barrel selects nice now what do you guys think about angel's envy because i know it's it's technically a blend it's not a pure bourbon but it's so popular and it seems like it seems like the greater marketplace doesn't care that it's a blend let me know what you think about that because I find that to be quite interesting myself Yeah, it's fun. I have a friend who's um, he's he's got the wherewithal to, to get just about anything he wants, and uh, I've had the great fortune of, of enjoying quite a few tastes from some of his bottles and some good good stuff. Um, oh, Chow says uh, sweet in terms of flavor profile, better than Four Roses. Now, Chow, which Four Roses do you like? Because I find that they're Normal bottle is not my favorite, but some of their single cask, and I know they have four varieties of single cask, and I don't remember what the four are right now, but of the four, there's one of those that I do really enjoy. It's like, seems, it, for my flavor palette, you know, better than the rest. And their distillery is interesting. You know, we, we toured there, they were telling us that you know, they were only available in, in the Asian market for a long time because the Asian market was buying you know, every bottle they made. Which is kind of impressive when you think about it. Uh, Quinch says, I've had some Pappy Van Winkle 12. I just shared a pour with someone just a bit more than a taste, but for what it cost, I was happy to try it for free. Yeah, I think when we did the, the whiskey tour, 
uh, or the, the bourbon tour, the bourbon trail, uh, one of the local places had it and they had it at a fairly reasonable cost per per shot. And so we got to try, I don't know if it was the 12, I don't remember which, which, which you know, age it was, but it was, it was good stuff. I mean, who knows if it lives up to the hype or not when you're just having one, one taste of it, but it was good. It was quite good. And on the rum side, I haven't really been to too many rum distilleries. I know we did Mount Gay in Barbados. I was trying to think if I'd done any others. I think, oh, in Jamaica, yeah, I think we did Appleton. But that's really it. So I'm definitely behind in terms of, of like rum. Quinch says, someone recommended Old Tub bourbon last week. Has anybody had experience? And Chow says, Old Tub is awesome. Yeah, I haven't tried that either. I will definitely have to try that. I'm always interested in, you know, giving a new one a try and then supporting the distillery if I like it. Um, Chow says, the nose is oak and nuts. I love that bourbon, one of my tops for the price. Oh, okay. Well, definitely sounds like it's worth checking out then. See, that's what we like, good recommendations. That's what Tiki Tuesday is all about. All right, let's do. Just trying to give these guys some, some shape and some form to get us started here. I think we could probably do something with the barrel, with the, the cauldrons though. Uh, Chow says, I had plantation Fiji and it's amazing. Oh, okay. I haven't had that one. I haven't had the Fiji. Good to know. Quinch Press says, what does he say? Quinch Press says, the Malhat Spirits that I mentioned earlier is primarily a rum distillery. It's the only rum distillery I've been to. I'd love to go to Appleton though. I have I have an Appleton 12 year uh, rare cask right now that's my favorite sipping rum. And Chow says he's not been to Appleton either. Yeah, we were we were in Jamaica years and years and years ago, and the all-inclusive resort we were at, um, you had like your own open bar in your room, and it was stocked with like all the Appleton stuff. And then you could go and do a a tour of Appleton. Now I'm sure the open bar thing it sounds great, and it was great, but I mean you know what a what a clever marketing exercise because if you you figure they're turning X percent of the people staying there into purchases. So it uh, probably works out pretty good for them. So I like the idea of this mug because um, you know, it's like you're drinking out of the witch doctor's cauldron. But of course, you know, the whole the whole mug will be filled with goodness, which is nice, but I like the idea that you're you're drinking his potion or his brew, as it were, directly out of the cauldron. I think that's kind of fun. Um, Appleton's pretty good, Chow. I think, you know, I wasn't sure if it would live up to the hype, and I haven't had it recently, but uh, at least at the time I had it, um, it was good. And it just, it, it kind of goes for, I mean, not, not stupid crazy money, but I mean, they definitely have some expensive bottles. Now, back when we went, they did not have U.S. distribution yet, and so you had to buy it there and bring it back. 
And I think I think now you can get it here. It's just expensive. It's like ah, uh, the good old days when we could all take trips, <laughs> travel outside the U.S., travel outside our homes. Uh, Quinch Press. Oh, uh, Chess says, I really want to try Belvaney. Oh, you haven't had Belvaney? Oh, yeah, you must. You must. You must. Um, uh, I had a friend that introduced me to that years ago. So here's what I'd say about Belvaney. Just avoid the 15. Um, it's not anything special. Uh, the 21 is my favorite of theirs. I don't know that I've had any. I might have had a taste of one older, but the 21 is really, really good. Um, for about half the price of the 21 though, you can get the um, the double wood. That's, um, it's aged, uh, I think once in, once in regular oak and then once in sherry cask. And the double wood for the price is really good because it's half the price of the 21. I think it's only aged like 12 or 14 years, um, but it's significantly better than the 15, like significantly. Um, but if you get a chance to try the 21, that is where it's at right there. Like that's that's why, like when people talk about how much they love Balvenie, that's usually what they're talking about is that 21 year old is so good. Um, it's probably my favorite Speyside um, scotch for sure. Uh, I would say that and like um, Avalor is up there pretty high, but the Balvenie 21 is really hard to beat. And then if you haven't had an Avalor or an Akatoshin, a um, little bit different flavor, fo flavor profiles. You, they may not be for you, but if you find one you like, they're pretty special. Avalor is such a tiny, tiny little distillery that you just can't imagine how they could ever make money even charging like $50 a bottle. You're like, how, how is this place even in business? So you get a real appreciation for for how special their stuff is when you realize how small of an operation is and how how little they really produce. And I think that makes you want it, enjoy it even more. Um, Quinch says, there is a sculpture I saw the first time I went to the Music Instrument Museum in Scottsdale that's a totem pole that has a different face on four different sides. This mug in concept reminds me a little of that. Oh, cool, I hope that's good. Uh, Child Time, has, have you had Red Rust? I have. Um, so I, I'm not the biggest Irish whiskey guy, but I have a friend who is so much so that he, he usually flies there at least once a year to buy whiskey. Um, and so all I can really say about the Red Breast is that he is not a fan. He says it's not the best of the Irish whiskeys, that even though it's popular here in America, that it's not necessarily... The connoisseur's choice. Um, I thought it was okay. The what, what I had, I didn't have enough of it to really know. You know, I only had like one, you know, one one dram, as it were. Um, so I thought it was fine. But again, my friend, who's a real a real connoisseur of the Irish whiskey, he's, he's he's not a fan. He's like, I mean, he didn't say it was garbage or anything, but he pulled out some other bottles from his collection, and I wish I could remember what they were. That were far far superior. So. For, for what it's worth. But again, I'm just not a specialist in the in the Irish whiskeys. I, I probably need to invest some more time and resources into that and develop my my palate or something. But my, my former neighbor, he's really into golf and um, he's a, a pilot for private planes. And so he has one client that they would fly over there you know, every every year to play St. Andrews and buy whiskey, so. <laughs> Tomcat's like, uh, yeah, I had rib rest one time after laying in the sun for too long. <laughs> Chow says, tastes more like bourbon. 
to me, the nose is like toffee. I can see that. Uh, Quench Press says, Appleton is awesome. I had some Appleton undertow that was really smooth, but I was so into funky rums at the time, I feel like it was just a solid sipping rum at the time. Uh, really nice, just not what I wanted that night. I had a really nice, well-aged Appleton at Arizona Cocktail Weekend last February that was amazing, um, but I forgot which one it was. They have some 50-year-old Appleton bottles that cost a fortune, but I've never been that lucky. Yeah, I think that was the good thing about that resort that we stayed at was that not the 50 year, but I think in the room we sort of had like the normal bottle and, you know, I know there were three varieties in the room. So that was, that was pretty cool. And the funny thing is it, it was all inclusive resort. And so it was very rum, rum centric and lots of, of fruity drinks and stuff, but they had like a piano bar that you could go to at night. And the piano bar had like, um, I think almost every variety of Johnny Walker, and I'm not the biggest Johnny Walker fan, but a friend that was with me kind of knew what the prices were on the bottles. And it's, again, it's all inclusive, so it doesn't cost anything to drink at the bar. And my friend was like, well, we're just gonna, I don't, I don't remember, is the blue or the black one the most expensive? I don't know, whatever, whatever the most expensive Johnny Walker, not the most, but you know, of the, of the three or four main ones. And so he's like, we'll just keep hitting off that one all night long. <laughs> Um, Quinch says, I've never had Belvaney. We'll need to get a hold of some. Yes, 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 for sure. For sure. Yeah, it's, it's, if you like Space Eyes, it's, it's, in my opinion, one of the best. Uh, Chow says, you know, sometimes I'm not a fan of the age. Red Breast 12 is better than 15. The 15 was so smooth and the finish was like vodka with no bite. Oh, I, I hear what you're saying there. And I agree, I agree that sometimes the, the age of certain distilleries are, you know, like I was even saying, like Balvenie, like I don't think their 15 is worth it. It's not, it's good, but you can find other bottles of other whiskeys at half the price of that 15 that are as good or as better. But when you get up to the 21, now it's the opposite where you'd be hard pressed to find something even at that elevated price that was as good. And so it's kind of, it becomes a value proposition in that way. I see there's a hydrate popping up. Give me just a second to do some of the shading on this cauldron here. And we'll hit that up. I just saw it out of the corner of my eye of my new glasses. I broke my old ones. Well, I mean, I didn't break them. The ground broke them. <laughs> they shattered. They hit the ground. There you go. It's not looking too bad. Um, Quinch says, there's an Irish whiskey liquor called The Knot. That stuff messes me up. Tomcat redeemed hydrate. Thank you, Tomcat. Look, we're getting, we're, we're getting down there. Quinch redeemed posture check. Thank you. <laughs> Let's do this as the ground didn't catch your toss. Yeah. I um, I was getting a coffee and I went to take my mask off and it flipped my glasses right onto the ground. And it broke into like three or four pieces. It was, um, yeah, it was, it was not good. And I had to like find some packing tape so I could see well enough to drive home. It's very annoying. This crowded coffee shop and I'm having to like put my mask back on and walk in there and ask the barista if they had any tape. It was very, very hilarious. Um, Quinch says, it's not the fall that hurts, it's when you hit the ground. Quinch says, I would buy this mug. Oh, thank you, Quinch Press. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. I'm. I, I think it's a it's a good idea. I mean, I don't know what you guys think. I mean, it's hard for me to tell through chat if you guys are hyped about it or not. But um, I think it's a, a solid concept, you know. I mean, if I was at a bar and I saw this and like, oh, you get to drink out of the cauldron, that kind of seems kind of cool, you know. I mean, 
you guys know I like I like those kind of like clever idea kind of things like that. Lestuda says, the glass is stuck to landing. The judge give it a solid 10 pieces. Yeah, that's that's the truth. These are a little, a little loose. They're brand new. I just got them in the mail, but I'm going to have to get them to fit a little bit better. But otherwise, they're, I think they're going to be okay. And they're similar shape to my old glasses, just a different color. So The important thing is, Christy thinks they look good, and that's all that matters. And I don't mind wearing my contacts, but after a few weeks, I was definitely ready to have some glasses again. Tomcat says, should we do an Irish whiskey tasting for Lord Sean's birthday on St. Patrick's Day? Well, I think we should, although I don't know what Christy will drink, because I don't think she'll drink any of that. Christy's, she's mostly like just beer and vodka. That's about it. I'll get her, I've got her into some of the tiki cocktails. Like she loves this blue Hawaiian, because it's really smooth. It's not alcohol forward unless you decide to add extra shot or two to it. So, so. <clears throat> Quinch Press says, speaking of mugs you should buy, my pal Devin DeRoe has, uh, has the H.O. Lovecraft inspired mug released by Mondo today, only 25. Well, I thought it was, I thought it was HP, there you go, HP Lovecraft. Um, so I'm like reading the teleprompter here. Uh, 25 that is a really good price. I don't know how they're doing that. I saw some other mug for 27 the other day, and even the people on that group were like, how is that priced that way? I don't, like, I know what this stuff cost, so <laughs> I don't know how they're, how Mondo's holding that price, unless they're, it, do we know is it limited to a certain number or something? Because I mean, they, I guess that they were buying a lot of them, or if they've got a new supplier out of like China or something. Yeah, that's a that's a really. I mean, they could really disrupt the market if they can start offering mugs at that price. Because really, all the decent mugs have been, you know, forty dollars and up. So, that's that's real interesting. This is the 60. Let's just go down one to the 50. Uh, Quinch says, I, uh, oh, Winnie says, I was shocked it was so cheap, especially for Mondo. Yeah. Yeah, I would think they, they, they must have hooked up with a pretty impressive production facility. Quinch says, I bought their Rocketeer mug at $35 too. Still not a bad price, really. And I like the sculpt on that one. I think it's pretty cool looking. So I don't want to overshade this grass skirt and make it look like it has more depth than it really would, but let's do some of this like war paint on these guys, I think. Um, Chow says, it's been a while, is the Octo Tiki on hold? Yeah, it's kind of on hold. So, um, first of all, the Tipsy Rum Barrel, I keep being told that I'm going to get an update on that, and it hasn't, I have not gotten an update on that yet. Um, as far as I know, it's all still happening. Uh, right before Christmas, they had like a 3D, uh, a final 3D sculpt, and they were putting it on the 3D printer. And that's the last I've heard. And I know that uh, Tiki Farm was maybe like moving their office. And so there was gonna be some sort of, of a delay. And I was originally supposed to know like January 15th or 17th or something and still no word and no response to emails. So we'll see what's going on with that. Um, the Octo Tiki will most likely be made by the new production partners that I've been talking about. And I can't say who they are yet. I'll, that'll be their announcement to make. Um, but this one I'm drawing tonight, the, um, the Witch Doctor's Potion and the Octo Tiki. I'll, I'll be revising the Octo Tiki a little bit, but those will both be going to them. Um, and then they'll make the decision about, you know, uh, which one they're going to make first and all that kind of stuff. Um, 
but we should have announcements to be made in the you know the coming months, weeks, months. Um, I've definitely found out that all this Tiki Mug stuff really moves a lot slower um, than I ever imagined, but but it will happen. It will happen. The Octo Tiki is going to happen in some way, shape, or form. Um, what I decided was there was no way I could do a Kickstarter during this big Smithsonian project. It's just taking up so much of my time. I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm, I'm having a blast. Um, but it's very, very, you know, uh, time intensive uh, with lots of like Zoom meetings and that kind of thing. And so that means that between now and July, there's just no way I could run a 30 day Kickstarter. It's just impossible. Um, so I've talked to these production partners and they're very, very, very interested. They had actually back in 2020 even talked about helping out with some of this stuff. So uh, hopefully it'll be a good relationship and um, and we'll get this stuff out there. That'll be, that's the hope, right? So um, they have a track record with other Tiki mugs. They're really connected in the Tiki mug community. Um, and I also know them through some other uh, properties and stuff that I don't know if, if I don't know what I can say. So, but regardless, um, you know, these things will be coming. So right now the idea is just to get some of the things that have been in my sketchbook drawn up and to them so that they can start making some decisions on, you know, which things they want to move forward with and at what sort of pace. So hopefully that's all going to mean good things moving forward. We hope, we hope. And look, at the end of the day, if if something doesn't happen, then we'll we'll kickstart it. I just I won't be able to do anything like that until the fall, um, because this Smithsonian thing is just it's too big of a honor and a responsibility to to screw up. And I've done enough kickstarters that I know that it's a it's a full time job for thirty days, and I I know that either the Smithsonian project would suffer or the Kickstarter would suffer or maybe they both suffer. So um, I'm just trying to find alternative ways to get these things done. And, and I think that these partners have, um, even though it probably means less money in my pocket, um, they're really connected in the Tiki community. And I think it, it, these mugs will reach a much wider audience working with them. Um, Chow time. Oh, let's do it says they must be millennials. Ah, uh, just kidding. Nothing wrong with millennials. <laughs> That's funny. I'm an equal opportunity making fun of, of different age groups. Millennial or not. So hopefully this marker shank is just giving us an idea of kind of what the sculpt, you know, we know it's going to be rounded, but sort of just like what some of the details might look like and that sort of thing. Because it's always a little hard to envision these things when it's just a like a flat drawing, but you can start to just work in some of the little design elements and get it to come to life a little bit. Uh, My kingdom for a 30. Quench Press says, so you're getting paid exposure. Oh no, no, nothing like that. I don't, I don't do those deals. You know that. Um, it's just, you know, if they're going to you know, if they're going to be the ones that produce it, then they're going to have, uh, you know, to make their money back and stuff like that. So, versus if it was a Kickstarter, then you know we raise the production cost ourselves. So that's all. But if you know, if I'm working with a partner who can have the expertise to get it produced and have the ordering on their website and ship it out to people and pack it and all that. Um, and it means it all happens 
while I'm working on the Smithsonian project, then I think that's a, a, a good trade-off to make. Tomcat says, I just found out I'm a millennial. I don't know how to feel about it. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Pretty funny. I guess you should feel pretty great about it then. Because if you're a millennial, that means millennials must be cool. I'm having fun with this, man. I hope, I hope, I hope you guys are digging this one as much as I am. Oh, yeah. I kind of feel like this would be... You know, I'm always thinking about like what would be fun when you're at the Tiki Bar, you know? And I think the Tipsy Rum Barrel is one that would be fun, especially the more you drink, right? The more of those you have, the more entertaining that mug becomes because it's off kilter. And I kind of feel like this, this mug will fall into that same sort of category where, you know, the, the more you enjoy from it in, you know, every time you pick it up, you could be holding it a different way and seeing one of the different masks and then the, the more enjoyment you'll get out of it, you know? I mean, I guess that's the stuff I'm trying to think of when I'm doing these designs is, you know, not just creating like a, a tiki motif, but um, something that has like a, a fun factor or, or memorability is what it is, you know? Something that you're like, oh man, that's so cool. I, I want to, you know, I want to have that. I want to interact with that. Um, let's do this. It says, millennial age ranges so vastly. Quinch Press says, wait, Tomcat's a millennial? Yikes. Tomcat's like, apparently, I had no idea. I've been working so hard. I guess I'll have to start slacking now. Pretty funny, Tomcat. Yeah, I've had some some people think I'm an elder millennial and I'm just like, I'll let you believe whatever you want to believe. <laughs> Let's do this is like, do you still have a relative's basement to move into? <laughs> That's pretty funny. Especially if you knew Tomcat have to fly halfway around the world to move into a relative's basement. Oh no, it'd be even better because you could move into your your you could move into someone else's relative's basement. <laughs> could you imagine if you if you like just showed up at Lord Sean's parents and you're like, we're moving in. I'm done working for the man. We're moving in. Uh, how would that go over, Lord Sean? Although I don't know, you know, sometimes, sometimes the, the mothers like the boyfriends and husbands better than their own kids. They'd be like, yeah, come on in, it's fine. You're like, what? No way. Way. No way. Uh, Tonka says, I don't think so. Maybe Christie's real estate friends can help me out and I can rent one. Quinch Press says, oh my gosh, who else is ready to pre-order this mug? Ah, uh, you're too kind. You're too kind. I'm, You know, I've, I've had this idea in my sketchbook forever. I think Quinch got here late, so... Quinch has seen it. Some of you guys didn't see the... So this was the original like sketchbook entry. And so that's when I had the idea for the mug. 
And then I started working on what the mask would look like. And that's when I was like, well, why not just figure out a way to do all three? And so that brings us to where we are today. Like as you spin the mug, you get to see all three of them. Um, so yes, we can't wait till we can announce pre-orders. That'd be fun. Uh, Tomcat's like, although as a millennial, the concept of paying rent is appalling to me. <laughs> He's like, Brian, we are definitely not moving in with Lord Sean Stepmonster. Yeah, that's what I was that's what I was thinking. I was like, I cannot imagine. A, it's just it's not in my nature to like ever move back in with a family member. Like unless I was completely destitute and had to. But yeah, I can't imagine whether it was my mother or Christy's mother. It was just like, no, no. I think I would, you know, I would get a job at McDonald's or Starbucks and get roommates before I did that. <laughs> so what do, you, what do you think, Quench? Is this one gonna, this is gonna be a winner? Got a winner on her hands. Uh, Quinch says, I'm tempted to have cocktail number three, and well, I don't work tomorrow. <laughs> well, I don't know if I have a third one. I'm still working on number two, but you go ahead. We, we still got, I don't know, at least 10 minutes probably. And it's not like you can't enjoy it when the stream ends too. Who knows, maybe we'll raid somebody and you can finish your cocktail while you're watching their stream. Well, I'm so glad we finally got to do another one of these Tiki Mug design streams. Um, it's been far, far too long. And I love all the normal Tiki art that we, we create here, but obviously these are these are really fun. Um, Marky Stuff says, I came way too close last year to having to move back in with my dad. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that, Marky Stuff. Um, and thanks for joining us. Um, you're, you're welcome to share or not. Was that like because of uh, COVID and uh, career situation kind of stuff due to COVID? Uh, obviously, only, only, only answer if you want to. You know, I mean, everyone who, who's uh, here on the channel, they know that, you know, the reason I started doing like sketches and stuff on Twitch is because I work in the comic book industry and it was severely impacted by COVID and um, you know most of my income went away and it still isn't all back and not even close so um, I feel you I definitely feel you man Chow says oh my gosh it looks awesome Tonka says hey Marky stuff are you a millennial too uh, Chow time says we're getting sleepy glad that we're able to log on today hey Chow Randy so great to see you guys congratulations on your new house I can't wait till you guys move in um, Keep coming back for Tiki Tuesdays, guys. So we get a lot of good stuff planned for the year. Uh, let's do it says, Octopolis Millennials Unite. <laughs> Tom Kitt says, uh, hey, let's do this together. We will change the world by, well, you know, not doing much. <laughs> I like that. That's a good answer. <laughs> That's a good answer. By, by doing as little as possible, we will, we will affect change. Come on, you guys are giving millennials a bad name now. Uh, Marky Stuff says, career stuff with COVID, have a new job now. Oh, well, congratulations, Marky Stuff. Glad to hear that. I've definitely, I've had those thoughts myself. I've been like, you know, is it time to consider options? I was talking to another artist, a really famous comic book artist, and I, I you know, I don't want to embarrass him. I won't say his name, but, um, you know, still at the top of his game, let me tell you, and He's really struggling right now and like me, you know, kind of living off sketches and stuff. And 
you know, we were kind of joking. I said, yeah, you know, you're, it's like you're too old to start a new career, but too young to retire without starving to death. And, and you're underemployed or unemployed through no fault of your own. You know, it's like you were kicking ass at the top of your game and, and then COVID hits and like, bam, the industry shuts down, you know, and luckily comics, they're back now, but nothing like it was. So, um, it's tough, man. It's really tough. All the whole, the whole entertainment industry is, is suffering. So, uh, if you found it, if you found another gig that works for you, congratulations. I think that's, that's good. I've often wondered, I'm like, gosh, you know, if I wasn't making art like what would I do would I would I try to go back and be a art director or graphic designer I don't I don't even know I've been doing this for so long uh, well guys unless you see something I missed I think we're at a pretty pretty good little stopping point here for tonight I want to say thank you to everybody who joined tonight for Tiki Tuesday it's just a blast to hang out with you guys it really is um, I want to say thanks to all the followers. If you're not following here on Twitch, uh, please do so. And thank you to the subscribers. You guys keep this channel going and allow me to bring this free content to everybody every Tuesday night. I'll be back on Thursday doing some non-Tiki live sketches. Uh, I think we, it's either gonna be Captain Marvel or Cobra Kai Thursday. So uh, keep your eye open for that. And uh, thank you to all of our Patreon supporters as well. Really, really appreciate all of you. <laughs> Whitney says, I don't see the pre-order link. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, all this Tiki Mug stuff, it moves at a much, much, much slower pace for sure. Uh, but speaking of pre-orders, um, my, uh, my new Star Wars artwork is available to order right now um, on Dark Ink. And I'm going to give you guys the link right here, right now. Uh, so this is my new... Empire Strikes Back art uh, with uh, both that ship, Slave One, and Cloud City and everything. And it is called Bounty Collected. Um, so let me put the link in here for that. There it is. Um, uh, Tomcat says, when will those ship? You know, I'm not sure, but I, I would imagine... I would imagine soon. They... You know, since that's not—it's not a Star Wars celebration piece, so they probably have it in hand. So I would say, you know, uh, sometime in February would be my guess. Um, and then I do have two new Tiki pieces out. Uh, I have the Mystery Girl print. I know some of you already bought that, so please check that out. And if you bought one, please go to this link and leave a review. Please, please, please leave a review. I hate to beg. But um, we're seeing a lot of people coming to the site and looking at that piece um, and maybe even putting it in their cart and then not completing the transaction. And I think a lot of that has to do with the lack of reviews. We only have one review on that. Um, and just think about like when you go to Amazon, um, all the different, um, uh, all the different uh, reviews you look at before you make a decision. Well, it's the same way on my website. So. Um, if you've purchased something, you know, go back and leave a review. It really helps other people um, make that decision, especially if they don't know me personally. They might not even know if Octopolis is like a legitimate site and they're afraid to order or something. So those reviews really make a difference. Um, okay, so let me go back and see what, we're, what everyone's saying here. Um, Let's do says, waiting for Tiki stuff takes time. The clock is Tiki talking. <laughs> That's a good one, Let's do this. Uh, Tomcat says, let's do this, you're on a roll. Uh, Quinch Press is going for cocktail number three. Uh, one half ounce of Mount Gay Triple Cask, uh, Diplomatica and Tempest Fugit Creamed Banana, and some Contro and some Mikasa Bitters. Very nice. Uh, thanks for sharing the social links there, Quinch. If you're not following, us, following me on social media, please do so. Uh, let's do this is like... Uh, at Tomcat, haha, thanks. Brian is missing them all. I went back and got him. It's fine. Uh, Quinch Press says, he doesn't hate to beg. He keeps asking me to leave one. To be fair, I feel really guilty that I haven't yet. Yeah, it, it makes a difference. The reviews do make a difference. So so please leave a review. It really it really does. Uh, just go. It just takes a second. Just scroll to the bottom of the page of, of whichever print that you've bought. 
and there's a little button that says write a review and it just takes you know takes a minute so please it's if you want to give back it's a good way to give back all right let's take 30 seconds and we will run the credits um oh but before that we will be having the mystery tubes for sale in february so all i can tell you is it's gonna have about hundred and fifty dollars worth of artwork inside including a legend of lando print uh, and it's going to be priced very, very, very competitively. Uh, you'll be happy with it. So uh, stay tuned for that in February. Oh, let's do this cheered five. It got in just, just, just under the wire in case the sticker didn't count. So let's just take 30 seconds to run the credits. We'll come back and we'll see about doing a raid. Are you kidding me? Did you guys just have a black screen? All right, we'll try it again. I don't know what's up with the credits lately. Yeah, uh, no doubt the credits failed. Let's try this again. Let's try it again. Do, 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 do. End credits. All right, we're going to try it again. Yay, credits! Yay, chow time! Yay, let's do this! It worked! It worked! Uh... Tomcat says, I ran out a bit, so I didn't share today. That's okay, Tomcat. We appreciate that. When he says, I'd buy that for a dollar. Uh, the credits are mean girls. You should hear what they've been saying about you in the halls. Ha! Huh? All right. So, thanks for watching tonight, guys. Really appreciate you. Had so much fun making this for you tonight. Uh, so, we are going to raid. 